Hey, Sandy, hey, Zuru. Hello. Hey, hi. Can you see the screen share? Yeah. yeah. Cool. We got Rama. Hey, Rama. You guys. All right. We can get started. Hello and welcome everyone to the Hyperledger Cacti Maintainers meeting. Please abide by the antitrust policy notice that I'm showing on the screen and also the Hyperledger Code of Conduct, which you can find linked to in the agenda document. And one thing I had is pull requests. I wanted to talk about a few of them. Uh, just as an FYI, I submitted two of them that you can see here, if you go to pull request, you see 2519 and 2521. They are both very, very simple, sort of administrative change kind of pull requests, but please, please do look over, let them over because maybe I did something that you don't think is a good idea. For example, here, I just mass upgraded all the container images which I know is fixing a bug that's been causing issues for all of the tests. Uh, and then the other one is also a bug fix, which was uh, causing issues for tests that we're running locally, uh, but also it's just a dependency bump. So it's pretty simple. And then the other thing I just wanted to uh, explain further this comment I made on Ramos pull request. I already approved it, but I just wanted to talk through the specific thing I said about the change log generation. So if you go to the change log .md file that I'm showing, then you see there are bug fixes. And then there are features and there are reverts as well. But there's a, the point is that there are these sections and uh, what actually makes it to this uh, release notes is uh, determined by what you wrote in the commit message. And so that's why sometimes if I see a bug something marked as fix that is not actually fixing a code bug or fixing a vulnerability that I try to ask the people who submitted the pull request to rewrite the commit message just because uh, if it's a documentation fix or if, if it's a fix in a test case then the people reading the release notes won't really care about them because they're trying to decide, oh, do I want to upgrade my production deployment to this release that you're seeing right here? And then they maybe read the bug fixes and then try to determine based on them. But if we introduce too much noise to that list of bug fixes, then they'll just get bored and not actually read it. So it's uh, the reason I wanted to explain all this because I always feel like I'm annoying people with these uh, nitpicky requests about how to format the commit messages. So I just wanted to explain that there is a specific reason behind it that is related to the commit messages being machine parsable and then they actually being parsed. No, not, not at all. I'll, sorry about that. I'll uh, change the fixture docs then. Thank you very much. And it's already been approved, so anytime you can you can merge it. Well, actually, someone else has to approve it. Uh, it can be anyone but Jackpreet because then we would still just have one company approving it. 
Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe Sandeep can take a look. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if he can take a look, that would okay. be great. Okay, so that's about these pull requests. And then the last thing on pull requests that I have is that I started going through them in order from the beginning, from the oldest ones. So I'm going to start looking at these and close them down a little more aggressively if I think they are not uh, going anywhere in the near future, as in we should either try to push them over the line and merge them, or if they've been abandoned for too long and we don't see ourselves being able to finish them, then just close them down for now and leave a message to whoever submitted originally. Something that says, oh, we are closing this now just to tidy things up to declutter, but you're always welcome to reopen it and continue working on it and uh yeah and and there will be a few of them where i'll just ask for reviews and i'll ping those to the chat uh, specifically so no action items from you from anyone here yet but i'm just letting you know that i i started doing this and the end goal is that we should never have more than 10 maybe 20 pull requests open at a time in my opinion if if we have 55 it's usually the sign of a lot of them just being stale and that actually is the case because we have dozens here that were submitted more than uh six months ago and uh and so with those the question always poses itself how much more effort is it going to be to rebase these with all the merge conflicts uh that were introduced in the meantime because as they grow older it becomes more costly to to resolve the marriage conflicts again uh so yeah, yeah it's just bottom line it's a tidying up kind of operation that i want to do and also at the same time i'm working in parallel or on making the CI a little more stable. And then hopefully the two combined together will put us in a position where we can accept contributions quickly and easily so that uh, we can we can always keep the pull requests uh, smaller if we don't have to do this thing where we submit large pull requests just because we know that it's going to take a lot of time to actually merge it in because the ci takes days to pass or even longer uh yeah that's it so that's that's that was my uh thing for today just keeping everyone up to date about these things that i'm going to do slash already do sure thanks And then I don't have any other agenda items. So if anyone else would like to say or show something, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, I wanted to get some feedback on the documentation. Uh, can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. okay. Can we also check this out online or is it just for local hosts for now? No, it's just local as for now. I'm uh, I haven't published it to uh, publish it anywhere. I just wanted to uh, get uh, your feedback on like uh, the the layout of this uh, page. Um, so uh, Tracy had uh, I mean uh, this is an adaptation of what Tracy had, and uh, she had a bunch of candidate. Uh, sections up on top uh, I changed those a bit uh, so I retained some of them uh, these don't have anything right now uh, just placeholders still like FAQs mm. glossaries I think contributing we can probably retain that uh, whatever she had it looked pretty good uh, just take a we'll review this again um, 
the introduction page, uh, I'll, I'll fill something here from uh, based on the content that we already have, uh, which introduces the the project, the maybe the history or something. Uh, same for uh, vision. What did I do here? Oh, oh, the vision. I think I just for now I just copied over the readme from the uh, from the Cacti repository, but uh, I'll, I'll change this a bit before uh, submitting for approval. Um, key concepts. I, I just retained this page. Uh, didn't uh, uh, maybe I'll take something out uh, from uh, the existing pages and uh, list them here. Also, want to feedback on that. Uh, use cases. I created a page. I thought it'd be good uh, to have a list of use cases here up front. Uh, and then one for cactus and one for uh, Weaver, one on uh, the integration roadmap. Uh, again, right now, this is just a copy of roadmap to ND, but I'll uh, change this to make it. Uh, uh, read better um, guides. I think uh, yeah, we have to figure out what to write here. Um, uh, references. I just uh, uh, yeah, this is something I'm going to fill. So for now, in the technical specifications, I just link to the cactus white paper, the RSCs in the Weaver folder. But I plan to add uh, like publication lists and list of the events and the uh, the videos you've done together uh I, I need to put them there um things like that uh under weaver you see uh i just imported the uh the pages we have uh in the weaver docs uh this side uh, this thing at the top is preventing me from looking at the tabs let me just see let me just one second Okay, let's see my screen, right? Uh, so this is the documentation we have, we published for Weaver. Uh, and this basically looks very similar. I just have to fix some formatting issues, some of the image links. Uh, for, uh, for, for Cactus, uh, I wanted to ask you like what, how exactly should I uh, structure this? Because you have the docs in here. And uh, there are some MD files here. And there is source. Uh, what should I look at in order to create the, uh, the chart for this page? There's a, there's a few different ways to approach it. One is that we could just abandon this I don't know yeah honestly I think we should just abandon this one and just go with the new one and so the question is then how to migrate it and the important information here is that most of these RST files are just doing an import of the markdown files Mm -hmm. So if you look at contributing MD, I think that's just going to be a reference to the contributing MD in the um, the root folder. Okay. So Very most much. of this, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not sure what I'm looking at right now either, to be honest. Give me one second. Maybe it's the, maybe there's a matching RST file. Or maybe it's in the index RST there. Or maybe read root. Okay. That is a table of contents here. So I think should I should use this, right? Yes. Yeah. So those are the markdown files that actually get referenced from the project root. And uh, yeah, that's that's how I would start. I would just uh, figure out if the new documentation template also works with these markdown files in some smart, easy way, like the way this does, where you can just import the markdown. 
Yeah, so uh, I uh, it, it kind of does. The only uh, catch is it has a, uh, I'll show you something. Like it, it imports, uh, for example, the notes and the, uh, the code and everything. The, the problem is uh, some, it doesn't, uh, it, it needs more white space. So if you see here, I think there's something, yeah. some issue with the, with the line break, which is why it's not interpreting this as a, as a node. So some places I have to insert uh, 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 an extra line. So that I have to do, and also I have to update the image references because it can't figure those out. So there's something I have to do manually, but I'm willing to spend some time to do that. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, then, then I think that's the way to go. We just take what's in here, the references to the markdown files, and we just pull in as many as we can, meaning we won't be able to pull all of them in because some of it will be conflicting information like the, the navigation bar or whatever definitions, but we can definitely use governance MD, build.md, contributing MD, uh, ledger support matrix as a support RST, uh, maybe packages as well. The regulatory and industry initiatives reading list. Oh, we have definitely the maintainers MD because uh, you want you want to show who the maintainers are so that people can figure it out. Yeah, so I had a, a proposal. Maybe what we can do is, if you're okay with the high level uh, categorization here, then. Uh, Maybe we do this in a sequence of PRs, like not uh, all in one PR, but in, in, in the first PR, we just uh, create the uh, this outline, uh, fill in as many pages as we can, leave the other pages as uh, work in progress. And in the cactus and weaver tabs, we just move the docs from the cactus uh, cacti docs and from cacti weaver docs folders respectively, so that uh they are in the in the right place now uh and in the in, in subsequent prs we we try and uh, remove some redundancy because that's uh, uh i think uh, there is, there are actually some placeholder files here for stuff like governance and policies but we never uh, <laughs> wrote anything so if you have something there you can get rid of this from uh, from Weaver and put it in a more central location. So uh, can do that uh, in like two or three uh, different PRs. And we also have to fill in things for uh, FAQs and glossaries and, and references and things like that. So uh, our guides, references I can fill in the first go. Uh, so uh, is that, does that sound okay? First PR, we just uh, move everything into a, uh, into one central, uh, docs folder and uh, then we refactor it in uh, subsequent PRs. Yes, anything that's the easiest for you, I'm totally fine with. And also, it sounds good that in a first PR, we just do the minimum viable change that pushes us forward, and then we can iteratively improve it later on. Cool. For governance and policies, we do have in the repo root a governance.md, which uh, talks about maintainers and how we do reviews and stuff like that. So if yeah. you if you don't have anything in the other one, then we can copy paste this if you want to. Sure, I'll I'll just do that. I there are a number of different files here. Uh, I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll probably just copy them over for the first iteration. Maybe we can uh, refactor them later on. Okay. Yeah, I will copy them first because uh, some of these have to be in the root just so that the scripts that uh, Rai runs sometimes picks them up. Uh, For okay. example, security.md has to be, maybe it does not have to be, but 
it's preferred that it's in the root so that people can always find it easily and quickly. Then maybe, yeah, maybe I can just uh, add a link here to that page. Uh, if we have nothing new to say here, it's just best to say, go look at governance.nb in the repository. Yeah, I'm totally fine with that too. Yeah, absolutely. It's, is it not possible to like import the data from governance.nb file and show it here? Yeah, we can do I'm that, but uh, the question is, do we want to uh, say the same thing in, in two different pages? Uh, if it's the same content, might as well just provide a link here. Or would we can discuss this? No, I, I mean, I was saying not creating a copy, but uh, mm -hmm. directly somehow showing the same file, contents of the same file here. Ah, okay, so whenever we push a change to governance.md in the repository, yeah. it will show up here and it will show up here. Yeah, we can yeah. write an action for that. Sure. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think this is a, uh, the documents are mainly a way for um, somebody to uh, just go and get started with the, with the code, right? Uh, rather mm -hmm. than having to navigate through the repository. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, agreed. Okay. Otherwise, uh, this I haven't changed anything in the look and feel of the page. This is I just changed the name and the logo, I replaced it with whatever Tracy had as default. This all looks okay. So just looks one thing I mean, in the Sorry, logo. Yeah, in the logo, can we have just the logo instead of hyperlinked cacti also? Because if you look into the tab, it's not very readable. The icon. That is true. I just change whatever uh, Tracy had. Let me see if I can make this <laughs> bigger. Yeah. I guess one more little thing I noticed is that on the top right corner, uh -huh. those numbers don't look real because I think we have yeah. 200 something stars. True. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll try to fix that. Yeah. I wasn't focusing. Yeah, it's a it's a minor thing. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, I haven't tried this either. Let me see what this does. Okay. Oh, it works. Nice. It does. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it looks great. The the menu structure, the layout, the the color theme. I think it's good. I like it. Yeah. Okay, so I will keep working on this. Want to uh, complete this before we have to submit the quarterly update. Oh yeah, which is gonna be due soon, probably in a few weeks, I think. I think about two to three weeks uh, left to go, mid-July. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Thank you for uh, working on this. This looks really good. You're welcome. All right, anyone else with any other discussion topics? Cool, then thanks everyone for joining and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.